The reason I call this a fabric caster is because it's a fabric top guitar. And what I'm doing here is prepping the body blank for the fabric. I'm painting it white because I didn't want the wood color coming through the fabric. If the fabric was a little too see-through, I would rather the color white come through. The first step in doing a fabric top guitar is really attaching the fabric to the blank. So what I'm doing here is using a mini paint roller to roll out some regular old tight bond wood glue. I do two applications to make sure that I have good, solid, even coverage of the wood glue on the body blank. Now, now I'm applying the fabric. I chose this fabric, I had, I had many fabrics that I could choose from, but I chose this fabric, I fell in love with it because it's non-repeating. A lot of fabrics, the patterns on those fabrics uh, repeat, and you can see that repetition in the space provided by the surface of a guitar. And I loved the idea that this pattern was random. Uh, almost looks like it's been stained with, uh, with a blue dye or something like that. So I'm checking to make sure there are no air bubbles. I'm using the rod of the um, paint roller to get all of those air bubbles out and get it as smooth as possible. This is a, probably a few hours later. The glue has dried and I'm trimming away all of the excess fabric using an X-Acto knife. And I'm just running the X-Acto knife right along the edge of the wood to get as clean an edge as I possibly can. There are many ways to seal the fabric or finish the fabric on a fabric top guitar. Um, I've come to really like using epoxy, epoxy resin. Um, I love the finish that it creates in the end, um, almost like a glass-like finish and it creates depth. Uh, so in order to work with epoxy on a body blank and not have it pour over the edges, you need to create a dam. And the way I do this is by using foil tape. I find that the foil tape is extremely sticky so it creates a really good bond with the wood and it keeps the resin, the epoxy resin, from leaking um, and it can hold up to the, the weight of the epoxy pushing out on the sides. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't get pushed out, it doesn't buckle, uh, it's a pretty stable barrier. So what I do is I fold the tape over, you'll see me do that. Um, about halfway because what I've found is the foil side of the tape does not bond with the resin and that's kind of important. I want to be able to take this tape off once the resin is cured. Um, what I'm doing here is sealing up all of the overlapping pieces of tape to make sure that there are no gaps that the resin can seep through. And here there was a weird kind of gap um, that I needed to fill up. I was afraid that resin was going to find its way out, so I added one more little piece to make it nice and solid. Now, the next step is pouring the resin, but first you need to figure out how deep you want the resin to be. I wanted it to be about an eighth of an inch, so I measured the length and width of the body blank. I converted that to centimeters and then I converted an eighth of an inch depth to centimeters and I came up with how many cubic centimeters of resin I was going to need in order to fill to a depth of an eighth of an inch. This is convenient because the cups I'm using here measure in cubic centimeters. So all I'm doing here is taking part A of the resin and adding it to a, a mixing cup. And I'm going to do the same thing with part B in a moment. Uh, this happens to be a one-to-one -one resin to hardener. That's the part B is hardener. 
um, a one-to-one -one ratio. So however much resin I put in is also how much hardener I'm going to put in. I'm making sure I get every little bit out because I want to make sure that my ratio of resin to hardener is as accurate as possible to ensure that it's going to harden properly. Now it's just a matter of mixing. You have to mix and mix and mix to make sure that the resin and the hardener are totally combined uh, and you don't have some areas where there's just resin or areas where there's just hardener. So I took out a lot of the video of me just mixing and mixing and mixing because you have to do it for at least five minutes I've found. Now, all you do is pour the resin into your, essentially the mold that you've created. And then you have to spread it around. This is, a, this will self level from what I've been told, but it's so viscous, it moves so slowly. I just give it a head start by, uh, by kind of tipping the body blank and getting the resin all into the corners. Um, and do my best to try and get it as level as possible. What you'll notice is there are a lot of air bubbles in it. Those are all those tiny little dots. So the next step is to take a blowtorch and very quickly move the blowtorch over the surface of the resin. And what this does, and I, I honestly don't know why, I think maybe it expands the gases in the bubbles, it causes the bubbles to disappear. And this is a process that you have to do over and over and over again. I usually do it for about 20 minutes intermittently. I get all the bubbles to go away, I take a break, I come back, more bubbles will inevitably have shown up, and then I do another round of the blow torching until it seems like I've gotten most of the air bubbles to, uh, to go away. So this is the last time that I blow torch the resin here. After 24 hours, the resin will be totally cured and you can remove your dam. And that's what I'm doing here. It pulls away very easily. As I said, the foil side of the tape doesn't adhere to the resin. And although it's very sticky, it comes off the wood readily. Now, I am going to be cutting the body out using a CNC machine. And this is going to require, for reasons I'll explain later, a very flat surface. And what resin will do is kind of ride up the sides of the wall you create with the foil tape and create a lip. And that lip cannot be there when you're working with the CNC machine. So what I'm doing here is with a, a random orbital sander and 400 grit sandpaper, I'm trying to get that lip to go away, trying to bring it down so that it's totally flat. Um, but I also don't want to have uneven sanding. So I am sanding the entire piece, but I'm sanding the edges more um, to, to get rid of that lip. This is a super messy process. It creates a lot of dust. From what I've been told, epoxy dust, resin dust, is not something you want to be inhaling into your lungs. So you'll see that I'm wearing a respirator. And now I'm just checking to feel if there's any, any more lip. And there doesn't seem to be, so I'm done.